Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In this video I'm going to show you how to make gofta curry, meaning meatball curry, using minced chicken and it's so delicious. So let's get cooking. So the first thing you're going to need is some chicken mince. So here I've got 500 grams of chicken mince. Now this meat has been taken from the chicken drumstick versus the chicken breast. I always find that if the meat is taken either from the drumstick or the thigh, the meatballs come out a little bit softer. But if you end up with just chicken breast that's minced up, that will be fine too. You may need to add a touch more oil to make sure that they're moist. So here I've got drumstick meat minced up and it's about 500 grams. The first thing I'm going to do is get the mince into a bowl so that I can start adding the spices. So I'm going to add two teaspoons of ginger garlic chili paste, a half a teaspoon of red chili powder, a quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder, a half a teaspoon of garam masala, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, a heaped tablespoon of chopped coriander, and about two teaspoons of oil. And then I'm gonna mix this together. Now, if you find that when you make meatballs, your meatballs fall apart, the reason is that you've added too much oil. So just make sure that you don't overdo it on the oil. Mix this together thoroughly with your hands. Once you've mixed up the meat, you wanna start making your balls. So I like to use a measuring scoop. This is about a teaspoon measure, just so that my meatballs are the same size. You can use a bigger scoop if you like. And another trick is to prevent the meat from sticking to your hand. This is a trick that my mom taught me. She uses some water in a bowl with about a half a teaspoon of malt vinegar in there. So you can use about a half a cup or maybe a cup of water with a half a teaspoon of vinegar in there and then wet your hands and then start making the balls and you'll see that the meat does not stick to your hands. Then once you're done making the meatballs, do not throw that vinegar water away because we're going to use it in the curry and trust me, the curry tastes like a hundred times better with that water in there. It's just so yummy. It just gives it this extra level that a lot of people don't know what it is, but trust me, it's that vinegar. So my meatballs are rolled and 500 grams of chicken mince made 30 meatballs. And I ended up using a half a cup of water with a half a teaspoon of malt vinegar. And we're gonna save this water for the curry. Now the next step is to get the sauce going. So for that, I've got a medium sized onion here that I'm gonna chop up finely. And I've got a tin of plum tomatoes that I'm gonna crush up. I may not use the whole tin, but I wanna make sure that it's all crushed up just in case I do need extra. So to make the curry, I'm using my shallow non-stick pan. It doesn't have to be non-stick. You can use a stainless steel pan if you like, but you want something that's shallow and wide. So I'm gonna start the heat on a medium high heat, the number seven, and I'm going to add a quarter cup of oil to this. I'm also going to add two pieces of cinnamon stick. Once the cinnamon stick starts sizzling, we're going to add our onions, along with a half a teaspoon of garam masala, which I'm gonna put into the oil, and two bay leaves, and then give that a stir. Now the reason I add garam masala in there instead of the separate cloves and other spices is because when eating the curry, I don't like biting onto a cardamom pod or a clove. The bay leaves and the cinnamon sticks are large enough that you can pick those out. So this is a trick that I use with any like meat curry that I make. 
So we're going to let this fry until it's golden brown. As I'm making this curry, I remembered why my mom likes to add the vinegar water into the curry and it's because the onions are so sweet and we add plenty of onion in there that the vinegar kind of counteracts that sweetness and makes it like sweet and makes it a little more tangy and it's so yummy. My onions are coming along nicely. So I don't want to make it too brown. They just seem to be turning golden now. So I'm going to add one cup of the crushed tomatoes. I'll add more if I need to. And that's about two thirds of the can. Then I'm going to add two teaspoons of ginger garlic chili paste, a quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder, a quarter teaspoon of red chili powder. You can add more if you like. It's already got some garam masala in there and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of tomato puree or tomato paste and then just mix that in. Now we're going to let this cook covered for a few minutes until the oil comes on top. Then we'll add the water with the vinegar in it. So the oil has started to come on top. I'm just going to give it a stir. And I'm going to add the water with the vinegar that we used to make the meatballs. So at this point, we're going to let this sauce cook, make sure it comes to a boil. And if you want to add potatoes in the curry, you can do so now and let the potatoes cook through before adding the meatballs. Once the sauce comes to a boil, you can start adding the meatballs, but don't add the meatballs until your sauce is boiling, otherwise they'll fall apart. So I'm going to turn my heat down a little bit. And if we shake the pan, we can squeeze a few more in there. Then cover it and let it cook. Now at this point, it's very important that you don't stir the curry until the meatballs are cooked. You can shake the pan like this very gently to move them around a little bit, but make sure you don't put your spoon in, otherwise there's a big risk of breaking the meatballs. So these have been going for a good five minutes and you can see that the color has changed. So now I can gently stir it and you just want to kind of pick them up, make sure it's not sticking at the bottom. Just to make sure they get covered with the sauce. And if you like more sauce in here, you can definitely add some more water. This consistency is good if you're serving it as an appetizer, but to have with roti or rice, it needs a little bit more water. So I'm going to add some hot water to this. Just mix that in. Now 
and let it cook. After the curry's been cooking for about 10-15 minutes, you can go ahead and taste the sauce. It's so tasty, but if you find it a little bit sweet because of the onions, you can add a touch more vinegar or adjust the salt. The salt actually is fine, but because I love vinegar, I'm going to add a few drops of vinegar in there. I'll let this simmer for a minute and then the curry just needs to be garnished. You can see how my meatballs haven't broken up at all. So the amount of oil you put into the meatballs is very important. And my curry is done. So I'm just going to turn off the heat and sprinkle a bit of garam masala on top. And of course, this is my mom's recipe, which you can find on my channel and some coriander and the curry is ready so there you have it that's how i make kofta curry and it's one of the favorite dishes in my family's home i can guarantee you there's not going to be any left this will serve two to three people so if you need to serve more just multiply the recipe i hope the tips that i've given you have helped you out and that you do give this recipe a try if you enjoyed my video please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and share my videos with your friends and family so they can enjoy it too i look forward to seeing you all soon for some more cooking inspiration